Hi everybody, Dr. Shadi Rapich here, board certified surgeon, chief of specialty, and part owner of True Care for Pets. Today we're going to go over the basis of placing a nasogastric tube, also known as an NG tube. This is a type of feeding tube that we use in some dogs. Clearly dogs that aren't really like eating very well, we need to get them started on some food. Or in dogs that continue to vomit, if you want to empty out their stomach, we'll place this feeding tube. And it's really great because it works very nicely for dogs that are kind of docile, or if they're even if they're not, you give them a little bit of sedation and they're very calm. So Jackson here, of course, already received some drugs to make him, make him a little sleepy. We already ahead of time placed some propericane, pro local anesthetic into the nose, trying to help numb the area. And that takes about 15 or 20 minutes to start working. Once you've done that, um, some basic instruments that you'll need will be, will be gloves. It's not really a sterile procedure, although um, it doesn't hurt to be, to be a little bit on the, on the cautious side with this. Then going to have our nasogastric tube. There's many different types of nasogastric tubes, many different sizes and lengths, and the veterinarian, of course, will pick the appropriate nasogastric tube for the particular particular dog. But your feeding tube basically looks like looks like this, and so this portion will go into the to the dog's uh, nose and into their stomach. And this is the portion that we're going to use to empty out any fluid in the stomach or to place food into the into the stomach. We're then going to place the nasogastric tube in some lube. That way it'll help move things along once we go into the, uh, into the nose. Now it doesn't matter which nose you pick. I like the left nose because the esophagus tends to lean more towards the left as it enters the stomach, but it doesn't really make a difference. When you, when you look at the dog's nose, they have this sort of curly opening to it. So you want to go ventromedially. So basically you want to go to the ventrum, so the bottom of the nostril, and go towards the wall on the inside. And that'll help kind of run it nice and smooth through the, through the nasal cavity. Now there are So now we've got Jackson's feeding tube in place, and you can see here on the x-ray, we have the feeding tube coming down the esophagus, going past the distal esophageal sphincter into the actual stomach itself. This gray area here is gas and fluid in the stomach. And so we know we're not in the airway because the, the airway ends right where this line is, which is the diaphragm. So we're actually going into the esophagus, into the stomach. For this patient in particular, we want the feeding tube to be in the stomach because we're trying to um, offer food, try to feed the patient, as well as we have to remove any fluid that builds up into the stomach, we can do it with the feeding tube. However, if this is a patient that we weren't really worried about constant vomiting and not having to remove any fluid from the stomach, we could just end the, end the feeding tube just before the diaphragm. That way we don't enter the distal esophageal sphincter. When you enter that sphincter, which is the junction of esophagus to stomach, you're more likely to get reflux. So if you can avoid that, then you will. But in this scenario, we really want to make sure that Jackson, if he's starting to build up fluid in his stomach, that we can actually remove it and simultaneously feed him when he's ready for feedings. So we're actually going to risk the esophagitis, the reflux um, esophagitis, which is basically heartburn in people. We're going to actually risk that because we really need to make sure we empty out his stomach because he's here for vomiting. So that's why we have the stomach tube into the stomach. So now your veterinarian is going to secure the feeding tube. We have the feeding tube in the nostril. In this case, Jackson's right nostril was better fit for the feeding tube in the left nostril. So all their veterinarian is going to use is some needle holders as well as some, some suture. And the key here is to make sure that the pet doesn't pull the feeding tube out. As you can imagine, a dog, unlike a human being, doesn't understand why a feeding tube is being placed. And so they'll try to pull it out even though we know it's for their own good. So we have to make sure that it's secure. There are different ways of securing a feeding tube. I tend to be a little bit more on the aggressive side with these pets. So that actually goes straight through the nose. Now, I know it looks dramatic, but the pets under sedation don't really seem to mind it, of course, and doesn't really hurt them afterwards. It's just a small pinch. It's almost like getting a blood draw. We're then gonna do what's called a Chinese finger trap. So if you've ever seen those toys, the Chinese finger trap toys, as you pull the, the Chinese finger trap tighter, the mechanism itself will then tighten. So we do the same thing with, with the feeding tubes of, uh, of, with dogs. So I'll do about four throws. And then we'll circle towards one end, circle to the other end, so you get that kind of a pattern. 
and then tie again. And for these subsequent subsequent knots, we're gonna do surgeon's throw and then maybe just do two throws instead of the four we just did for the first anchoring suture. See that? And then we're gonna switch around again. Now, if you end up taking a, a, a bite with the suture into the nose and you get some bleeding, don't worry too much about it, just some gentle pressure and that'll help stop the, stop the bleeding. There's no rule on how, on how uh, long you wanna make these, the Chinese finger trap. You see how we're starting to get that Chinese finger trap pattern here? But I would say probably the more you can do the better. So when you take your original bite into the nose, you wanna make sure you have enough suture material on both sides, on both sides to do the Chinese finger trap. See that nice pattern? And Jackson is doing just fine. We're continuously monitoring oxygen levels and heart rate, as well as respiration rates. So we're making sure that he's doing okay with the, with the sedation. Now the next step here is you need to anchor the feeding tube to the side of the muzzle here. So you see how that looks? You don't want it to be too tight or else it's gonna be uncomfortable, but you don't want to have it too loose or else they can get the feeding tube caught on stuff. So you want it to be just, just resting on the, on the side of the muzzle. And then we'll put another anchoring suture on the side of the muzzle here. And again, you want to be pretty aggressive with this because they, they do have thick skin in this area and pets are going to want to pull the uh, feeding tube out because they don't understand why it's there. So I'll take one bite through the skin around the feeding tube like that and then take another bite through the skin. Again, there's lots of variations of this, but I tend to be a little more aggressive A lot of these pets are very sick, and if you can just place the food tube in one time without having to replace again in the future because they pulled it out, you'd like to do that. You see, we've got a little bit of bleeding here, but that'll resolve on its own, and Jackson won't know the difference. Do about four or five throws. And there's the finished product. We've got a nice looking feeding tube. This is about a 10 French feeding tube here for a relatively large breed dog. And so we're going to place one more suture here on the side of the cheek here to anchor for one more, one more time. And then we're good to go. We can start getting Jacks on the way to health. I'm gonna secure the feeding tube over the cheekbone here, the zygomatic arch. And again, I'm pretty aggressive with, with securing these. I wanna make sure that they definitely don't come out. So I have to get a pretty big bite. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take another big bite. And again, if you see any bleeding here, it's okay, it'll stop on its own. Um, it's just like getting a, a blood draw, it's just a little pinch. That, that really will secure it nicely and then we'll, we'll make sure it's a, a little bit snug, but not, not, too, not too loose either. Do a surgeon's throw. There we go, we got it secure. And this is just an added measure to make sure that we don't, we don't uh, dislodge the feeding tube. And then leave, it, leave the tags kind of long so folks know that it's actually secured here when they have to remove it and Jackson finally feels better. The next step is this feeding tube, in order to make it more rigid, has a stylet in it. And so we have to pull out the stylet. And so one of the tricks that we'll, that we'll commonly use is we'll place some saline, go for it. We'll place some saline into the feeding tube. It's very important that you make sure the feeding tube's actually in the stomach when you do this. Because if you're in the airway by accident, you're gonna cause a really bad pneumonia. 
Once you place the fluid in the feeding tube, it'll help lubricate the stylet. The stylet is a very thin metal wire that helps with, with rigidity of the feeding tube. That way it's really easy to place a feeding tube in place. Otherwise, the feeding tube would be too flimsy. And you can see here we're pulling out the stylet and it's coming out really nice and smooth. If you didn't place a saline in there, sometimes you'll get lucky and it won't cause a problem. Other times when you, play, when you remove the stylet, it'll cause wrinkling up the feeding tube. And so it's a little trick that you guys can use out there when you're placing feeding tubes that have stylets in them. Thank you so much for watching this video. We hope we helped teach you something, both for veterinarians and for pet owners. This is Dr. Shadi Rafish, board certified surgeon, part owner and chief specialty at True Care for Pets in Studio City, Los Angeles, California. Thank you so much. Take care.